Yeah, so uh, welcome again to this session. Uh, my name is Michael Engel. Uh, I'm relatively new here at NTNU, started about a year ago, and then, of course, directly had all this fun with online lectures and Corona. But we had some experience with online teaching before. So uh, we did uh, flip classroom lectures and everything in Germany before, where, where I was uh, in a different position. And so I thought I should explain the mode that we're going to use for this course now. So the lecture mode for now is what is usually called flipped or inverted classroom. So what on earth is this? So since we have to stay at home anyways, I think it doesn't really make sense to have too many online sessions that schedule and ruin your day. But I want to enable you to virtually, yeah, well, attend lectures whenever you have time. This means uh, you're able to watch the videos whenever it suits you best. This also means that, uh, yeah, you can rewatch a video uh, easily or you can, uh, you know, slow it down, speed it up whenever there's something you, uh, well, uh, fail to understand at the first uh, try or whenever there's something that you know already. So that's the idea behind uh, flipped classroom mode to have the videos pre uh, available online for you to, to watch whenever they're available. And uh, in flipped classroom, usually we replace lecture times by group work sessions. Now that's a bit difficult to do right now due to Corona, especially since we have uh, like around 280 students registered for this course. So what we're going to do is we'll have weekly sessions like this one. So Thursday is 12.15 to one o'clock on Zoom, where we can discuss well, whatever is required on contents and logistics and general Q and A's, and especially where we'll discuss solutions to the exercises you had to hand in in the respective week. And of course, I'll present the new exercises for the week and give a number of hints for those. So uh, you've probably all seen the email by uh, the rector regarding new corona measures and opening up campus for some physical uh, teaching. Well, we are a large course, we are a third year course, so that doesn't apply to us right now. Things might change rapidly or not, who knows. So we'll stay with this lecture mode for now. And I hope that's so far okay. Uh, this flipped class remote by pre providing videos has a number of advantages. So what we're going to try, this is a bit time consuming, is uh, yeah, not only to put the videos on YouTube, they, they will be all published on YouTube, but YouTube has a very nice feature of providing automatically generated subtitles. So if you have some difficulty just understanding what I'm talking about, uh, due to whatever noise or loudness level or my strange German style dialect, whatever, uh, um, we'll provide uh, these subtitles. So these are automatically generated using some sort of machine learning, but they can be edited. That takes some time, like about an hour or two per lecture, but we'll provide this and this might even help some of your fellow students who have problems with hearing disabilities or similar to, to easier follow the lectures. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So uh, usually at the beginning of the week, you should receive two new videos. That didn't work out perfectly this week, just because I had two pretty painful dentist uh, appointments. And so the video I wanted to generate yesterday just didn't work out because I was unable to speak for longer. Uh, as you probably hear, this has become a bit better again. So I hope we have the video, the second video for this week up by tomorrow morning. And uh, after that, it should be more regular, I hope. So uh, as you've probably also seen the main source of information, I put it on a website, just because uh, Blackboard is a bit unpredictable. You maybe notice that Blackboard's, Blackboard was upgraded by the IT department uh, just the Sunday before lecture started and nothing worked. So uh, that's pretty crazy. So this website uh, web page is just the root of all important information. So it contains the syllabus, links to lecture slides, links to exercise sheets, links to YouTube to get the videos, additional material and so on. Lecture videos, as I said, are on YouTube. So the link from that web page We'll still have a Blackboard course because we don't have any useful alternatives for submission of exercises. And I'll send announcements around using Blackboard. And for discussion, we have a Piazza discussion forum 
under that URL where you're very welcome to ask questions, to discuss among yourselves or to discuss with us if there are problems, things that are difficult to understand, whatever. And Piazza has the big advantage that you can be anonymous, so you can choose a pseudonym and just say you are whatever, Mickey Mouse 42. And uh, this, I hope, enables uh, some of you who are not quite sure, like, is this a really useful or good question I'm asking? Please ask. If there's anything unclear, we're happy if you ask anything, even if it seems to be obvious to, like, 55% of your friends already. Uh, just, just ask questions. That's perfectly fine. There are no stupid questions. You know, there may be just stupid answers. And we'll try to avoid this. By the way, I see on the bottom of the slide, there's still compiler construction Q&A. Sorry, I uh, didn't update that. That's, of course, the operating system Q&A. All right. So exercises or assessments uh, are split in two parts. So we have theoretical exercises. These theoretical exercises are not mandatory. They are recommended for you to work on. So we'll have uh, six theoretical exercise sheets. Uh, you can hand them in and they will be corrected and commented on by our TAs, but they do not form part of the grade. What I want you to learn about in this semester is not only how an operating system works on the outside, but also how do you use an operating system as a programmer? So we'll have a set of practical exercises and these practical exercises are mandatory to work on. So uh, we have five different practical exercises and they are at least to a certain extent based uh, on each other. So we have a subsequent evolution of topics. And what you're going to learn is to use a typical Unix-like operating system, so Linux or uh, whatever POSIX compatible system there is. So this should also work for Mac OS 10. This should also work if you use the Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows 10. So we should cover most of the operating systems. And you should learn how to use the operating system abstractions that are provided as a means of getting your program to work. So how to work with input output, how to work with process synchronization, communication, and so on. The practical exercises make up half of the overall grade. And so each of the practical exercises is then in turn worth one fifth of this. So 20% of the 50%. If you have noticed, uh, I put up the uh, first practical exercise uh, just a couple of minutes ago on the webpage. Um, if you are also uh, participating in the compilers course, this first practical exercise, which is on an introduction to C programming is actually identical. So you can, easily uh, gain some points here, uh, which I think should help you a bit to get started. What I would like you to ask is to submit solutions in groups. So because we're 280 uh, students around registered for the course and we have five TAs, uh, well, we can't really uh, look at 280 different solutions every week. Uh, so it would be helpful if you could submit your solutions in groups of three students or in exceptional cases, two students are, are also fine. I enabled the functionality to find group partners on Piazza, but you still, after you found a group, uh, have to enter them in Blackboard. That's not ideal, but I thought it would be better to have you find groups because you know already some fellow students you have been working together with in previous semesters. And I didn't want to force groups to work together because, yeah, I, I never liked stuff like that as a student and maybe that, that shows here. What's interesting and perhaps a bit unusual is that you have a two weeks time to submit uh, solutions for the theoretical and practical exercises, but we give out a new theoretical or practical exercise each week. So in week one, we had a theoretical exercise. This week we have a practical one, next week a theoretical one. And uh, so there's a reason why they overlap because the theoretical exercises should also help you a bit to prepare for doing the implementation part showing up in the practical exercises. And having two weeks available maybe makes your schedule a bit more flexible. So it actually helps you uh, to get stuff going. So uh, practical exercises hands out start this week, as I said, two weeks for a submission. 
and uh, we are not sorry that's not a copy and paste error we are not going to write a compiler here obviously we are going to explore different uh, properties of using operating systems so uh, we are taking a look at how to synchronize different processes running in parallel we're taking a look at how to work with threads so multi-threaded applications we're taking a look at deadlocks and at memory allocation so how about the grading well letter-based grading is back Hooray or not, I'm not sure, but we uh, had some feedback that it's quite difficult, especially if you want to apply for a PhD later on or maybe go for, for a semester abroad or whatever uh, to, to just have uh, yeah fast fail grading. So we'll introduce letter grade based grading here. And we have two parts. So we were asked to reduce the reliance on home exams. You probably all heard of the problems we had due to uh, students cheating in this big Java programming course and 15 students uh, not being expelled, but, but having some, yeah, uh, at least uh, restrictive measures applied, I'd say. So uh, that's why we have two parts, as I said, the practical exercises, which are 50% of your final grade. And we'll have a home exam. And I guess this was in, uh, announced already last December. I think this is not going to change. This home exam makes up the other 50%. The exam will be based obviously on the lecture contents and also on theoretical and practical exercises. We are going to publish an example exam so you know what typical questions look like, how much time you need to work on uh, certain questions and so on. And it helps you to really figure out if there's any uh, things you, you maybe missed your, uh, throughout the semester, things like these. We'll also publish a sample solution for this example exam for self-assessment. So you can really check out what's wrong, uh, what's right. So what you got wrong, what you got right. Uh, we are not going to correct this example, uh, example exam, but we'll have an additional Q&A session for this. So if you have worked on this example exam on your own uh, and have questions, well, we have a session for this. So you know a bit better if there's things that aren't clear, what's going on. So we have uh, five TAs here, Alexander, Ruben, uh, Scott, Cinder, and Victor. They mostly uh, help commenting and correcting the exercises. Uh, since uh, we have very strict regulations here at NTNU, the grading is up to me. So let's see how much of my time each week uh, will be spent on grading practical exercises. I hope I don't delay this too long, uh, but it, it takes some time, even if we have like groups of three going through like 90 uh, exercises uh, takes a bit of time, but still, uh, yeah, I, I hope we can get this all done in time. So you always know, you know, uh, how many points you already achieved in your practical exercises. Uh, I think that's good to have. So what are we going to talk about this semester? So the lecture that's coming up, hopefully uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we'll give a review of relevant computer architecture concepts and uh, how to use them from applications. And then we'll talk more about challenges and tasks of operating systems. So why is an operating system a really complex and difficult piece of software? And then we we'll talk about, yeah, whatever an operating system provides to a user or programmer, like control flow abstractions, so we can uh, enable processes to have certain functionality encapsulated in an environment and threads cooperating with each other. Then we have different things going on at once. So concurrency, mutual exclusion, synchronization and deadlocks are important things in operating systems. We'll talk about main memory, how to manage this and how virtual memory works. Then we'll talk about allocating processors, so scheduling in the simple case for uniprocessors, more complex cases for multiprocessors and real-time systems, and also about I.O. management, disks, how to schedule disk accesses, and how to manage files on your disks. And at the end of this semester, we'll talk about some advanced topics, which I hope some of you will find interesting. Like in cloud computing, uh, you will have some quite different environments. For example, if you have a system uh, running on the uh, Amazon AWS system, so ES2 or something. So we'll talk about virtual machines and microkernels. So how to provide a complete virtual computer to your customers, and then about systems using those. So cloud systems, uh, a special version of operating system 
kernels called unikernels uh, used to enable yeah, cloud processing and uh, also uh, related to this are single address space operating systems. And we'll take a quick look at some topics which are getting more and more interesting. I think uh, one is embedded systems, which have completely different requirements like energy consumption reduction compared to desktop operating systems. And of course, a very uh, interesting and important topic for operating systems is security. So we'll also talk a bit about operating system security, uh, though this doesn't really uh, make up for a complete course on security, which I hope we can also have some at some point. So uh, regarding literature, I will base this course uh, loosely on uh, those two books. So the first one is by uh, Remzi Apasiduso and uh, Andrea Apasiduso called Operating Systems, Three Easy Pieces. So maybe not that difficult after all. And the nice thing about this book is there's a free PDF download at that URL where you can just download single chapters or the complete book. And it's really well written. So uh, yeah, that's uh, well very much recommended. If you rather prefer a traditional textbook, there's this textbook by William Stallings, which is already in the ninth edition. So this has existed for quite some time. Operating systems, internals, and design principles. Um, I think there's also a PDF version you can get on the net uh, for money, I'm afraid. And we'll also publish additional papers, articles, references on the web page. So if you want to dig deep, deeper somewhere, if you're interested in some of these topics, even if it's not part of the exam or the grade later on, I, I like to give you additional materials so you can actually, yeah, just, just read a bit more if, if some specific topic interests you. 